So how, tell me a little bit about that, like how it's been going, you were on the West Coast. This, this tour for this album has been like, it was like 40 dates or something like that? 45 or 46. Yeah, 46 I think, wow. um, as for the headlining tour, for the prologue tour as we dubbed it, named after our album. Sure. Uh, and we did 40 dates before that opening for Joe Purdy, which was the first thing we ever did as a band. Wow. And uh, so, and that was right immediately before this one. Uh, so it's been uh, by the end of November, which uh, it'll, it'll be basically seven months on the road with a, you know, some really small breaks here and there. Sure. But pretty much not. Yeah, stuff. that's a lot. Um, Kenneth hasn't unpacked a suitcase since January. <laughs> Just to do laundry and then you put it back in, or yes, yeah, sort of. Yeah, I mean, just I haven't settled in anywhere. Sure, that's all. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, so one of the things that you guys are pretty passionate about, you're giving your music away. So can you tell us a little bit about the thought process behind just like let's just give it away to whoever wants it? Yeah. Well, the record we decided doesn't have much value to begin with. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That was just the accurate price point we thought for how much we like it. Well, the thinking behind it really is that we do, uh, you know, we have done so many live shows this year, and that seems to be what we're fueled by mostly anyway. Sure. Um, be that artistically or financially or, or, or however you want to look at it. That's the thing, and that's the thing that Joe and I enjoy doing day in and day out. Um, and we thought, what better way than to make an album? You know, we have a we have a luxury of making an album that sounds exactly like our show on stage, mm -hmm. because it's just the two of us. It's just two guitars. We don't plug them in. It's in front of microphones. Right. And so the record really always seemed like it was just sort of a stand-in for what we wanted people to come see in person, anyhow. Sure. Um, and the first one was that. The right? first one was that. And so we thought, what, what better way than to entice people uh, to these live shows than to, to just give them uh, the, the material that sure. they'd be working with anyway. And it seems to have worked real well. With yeah, you guys have been pretty successful. It's like, was it, was it more, have you had more, like, downloads or however you want to judge the success of the album than you anticipated? Has it been more successful than you thought it would be? Well, I, yeah, I stopped setting real goals after the first one did so well. Well, so do you remember what happened with the first one? We kind of put the first one out not really expecting anything, and we looked at the, after like, uh, the, the, our, our tracking is like three days behind, Yeah. and we looked, and the first number we had was in the first three days, like 5,000 people had wow. got it, and that was like, that so blew our mind. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, you know, now both records are up. Both records are over twenty-five thousand people, and the irony. I, I was telling someone the other day that they, uh, some of our fans, um, have even expressed like anger that we give it away for free, and I, I think it's meant it flatteringly sure. as a compliment that like, they love it so much and they want us to, I don't know, um, earn money off of it so that we can keep doing it right. or whatever. It, um, but. Um, the irony is, I guess, that we've we've sold more copies. It, we, you know, we make these available for free, but they're also on right. iTunes, and we've sold more copies than we ever sold of any of our solo records that we weren't giving away for free. Yeah. And and uh, so, I, you know, I think that just the way that the giving it away for free has allowed it to spread sure. um, has has uh, you know it's been the best thing that we could have done, and to, it was really. A, it wasn't really a decision that we struggled over. We just kind of threw it out there, and it seemed like the obvious thing to do. And yeah, I mean, we have it a, seems like it was right. We have a lot of people on the blog that are like, "I just want you know any music, but I don't want to pay for it. I can't like I can't right. afford to pay for it." And I'm all the first one I was thinking of is, "Hey, these guys are giving their album away for free, so I think that right. that definitely you know entices some new listeners too." Well, and the, we you know it's not that we eschew money at every turn. Sure. I mean we're, we're we want to be able to do this as long as we can and. We sell vinyl and we sell CDs and, sure. and people. We tell people that it's free at the show, and five minutes later they come up to us and buy it. So I think there may be something in the attitude of it that it just that appeals to people's um, you know goodwill and desire to support, especially when it's something that they've reacted with you know emotionally. So uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so what, my next question is my my initial reaction. So the first. Uh, Greg, who writes in the blog with me, had written about uh, 
prologue. And so I went to, you know, check out what it was about, and, and I downloaded Retrospect and listened. And the, the first song on the album is Permanent, and that was my first, like, the first interaction that I had with the music. And I'm wondering what, what like, what the story is behind the song. Because I, like, for me, I, like, I find it really easy to relate to. And I, I don't think I'm thinking about like people that are, you know, in their t- like twenty somethings. You know, like it seems like easily easy to relate to. And wondering if there's a story behind it. Mm-hmm. Well, Joe, that... Joe, uh, Joe took the, the that was one of Joey's songs um, from his catalog before we met, and, and he always tells the story backwards on this one, I think, uh, which is that it's all of those things, all of the emotional content that I I too get out of that song was brought about by a, f- uh, a first sort of banal uh, experience of going to like a Best Buy to buy speakers or something. And there was something about the experience that triggered sure. you know, a, a thought and something he, uh, he, ex- he then expounded upon. But, uh, but I think the, the overall current um, is what on that one, Joe? Well, yeah, that's the story that inspired it, which is probably directly the answer to your question. Which is, it's not a very interesting story in itself, but it's a terrible story. Yeah, I actually think it's embarrassing in some ways. <laughs> Maybe to you. I actually think it's the perfect story. You know, I mean, what 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 could trigger your sort of self reflection toward desiring something lasting, you know, and something to hold on to more than a uh, a. Uh, a sort of a trivial trip to to a big box retailer, sure. you know. I mean, it has to be something that mundane that kind of, you know, flips something in your mind that goes, "What am I doing?" Yeah. Um, so, so yeah. I mean, specifically, it was a it was a trip to Best Buy, <laughs> I suppose, that uh, that was the spark for it. But it was the reaction to it. Obviously, that's the song. The song is the reaction to it. Uh, you know. Cool. We write um, all of our songs about that stuff. Good. I have a song about a Pizza Hut Taco Bell combination <laughs> yeah. restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. Are you gonna play that tonight? Yeah. That's awesome. Um, uh, KFC is now rolled into that mix thanks to Young Brands. Right. <laughs>